and welcome God in this place. We want this to be an atmosphere where He is welcome. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and lift your hands unto Him. God, we've come into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. Lord, we've come to give you everything today, unrestricted, uninhibited praise today. God, I've come to give you everything. I surrender unto you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. God, whatever you want to say to me today, God, whatever you want to do in my heart, God, right now, Lord, let my heart be ready for what you want to say, for what I need to receive, God. God, use me in the gifts of the Spirit today, God, to minister, to edify your church, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in this season of fasting, God, we believe you to do miracles today. Lord, I'm not going to let this service go by as a normal service. God, I'm going to do your purpose. I'm going to do your will. Speak to me. Speak through me, God. Use me for your glory today, God. Hallelujah. Would you praise him? Would you thank him for what he's going to do? Would you have an expectancy this morning? Would you have some faith that God is going to move, that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think? God, I thank you in advance for that miracle. God, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do, for healing my body, for restoring my mind, for restoring my family. God, what I'm fasting, what I'm praying for, God, I believe right now in this service, God, I offer up that sacrifice of praise. I offer up that sacrifice to you, Jesus, knowing that you're going to do what you're able to do in the name of Jesus. Oh, we worship you, God. Would you worship him this morning unrestricted, unrestrained, just all for his glory. These altars are always open. We're going to worship him this morning. Hallelujah.
testify of where God has brought you out this morning. If he saved your soul, if he's healed your body. I'm so thankful for the cross. I'm so thankful for the blood this morning.
knew that God became my father when I was lost, when I had no one to turn to. He was there for me. If you've got a testimony, you should not be able to sit quiet. You should not be able to stay in your seat. God has been good to us. He rescued me. Somebody just needs to take a moment and shout and think about what the Lord has done for you. God has been too good to me for me to withhold my praise. Come on, saint of God, if you've been through a trial, won't you give the Lord a shout of praise? There's victory in the house. Yes! Praise God, praise God. Jesus said, I come that you have life and life more abundantly. Yes. Anybody testify that Jesus gives life more abundantly? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Feels good in the house of the Lord yes. this morning. I'd like to welcome everybody, Amen. especially our first time guests. God bless you. <laughs> welcome to Christian Life Center. Um, as was previously mentioned in the uh, welcome video, um, we have welcome home cards. So um, if you're a first-time guest, have not filled one of these out, we encourage you to fill this out, and we want to connect to you and your family. And we also have some gifts prepared for you. Let's take a moment or two and greet each other in the house of the Lord.
can return back to your seats at this time. Praise God. As the ushers get prepared here in just a moment, we're about to have the opportunity to worship God through our giving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. We're a church who puts faith. Amen. There's four ways to give. The Tithely app, text to give. The number's here on the screen behind me. Um, envelope in the offering plate. And there's a kiosk out in the lobby. Let's say our offering decree together as it appears here on the screen. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. I am a cheerful giver. Today I bring your tithe and my offering to put into your storehouse. I also give my faith and action offering according to the pledge I made to you. Therefore the enemy is rebuked and every curse is broken. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You will pour upon me such blessings that there is not room enough to receive. I receive your blessings in my family, finances, body, and spirit. All that I do will prosper according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated as you give. Just a quick announcement like to remind everyone of um, we are having our CLU classes every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Uh, Christian Life University is an opportunity for you to plug in in a deeper way. Um, and so we have CLU 101. And if you have been to Firm Foundations 101, um, it's the same as CLU 101. And you can go to CLU 201. Again, that's every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You can also scan the QR code on the banner out in the lobby to register for that class. Amen. Let's worship the Lord today. Um, one more thing. All of our events are found on clcflagler.com forward slash calendar, and you can get plugged into absolutely everything we're doing. God bless you. Let's worship the Lord together.
Let's continue to lift our voices and lift our worship unto the Lord right now. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence that's in this room right now, Jesus. We thank you for your anointing that's in this room right now, Jesus. You are so good to your people, Lord. You're so good to us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the living God. I tell you, this is a special atmosphere. When you put your flesh on the altar, boy, something just happens, doesn't it? Do you know you can be healed in this room right now? In atmospheres just like this, I have seen blinded eyes opened. In atmospheres just like this, I have seen with my own eyes deaf ears opened. I've seen with my own eyes tumors disappear. All you have to do is believe him. All you have to do is ask him in faith. Nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. That's the kind of presence you're in right now. You're in the presence of the one who has all power, has all control. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 6. can 
remain standing in honor of the Word of God. I'm so thankful for this church. There's so many people that are just sacrificing right now. We are on a 21-day fast on one level or another, and um, it's a sacrifice. It's a cross. It's a burden. My flesh doesn't like fasting. I don't know about y'all. If yours does, I maybe need to sit down with you and see if you can help me get to that level. But my spirit is soaring. Can I get a witness in the house right now? My Lord, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Praise God. This is day four, and um, I hit some pretty hard detoxing yesterday. But um, it seems like you'll hit different levels in a fast where you will go through some serious detoxing. But normally the day after is just like you're clean and filled with energy and jittery with energy. It's just unreal how God made the human body to fast. I'm so thankful for this church. I'm overwhelmed with thankfulness for this church. My wife and I have been praying. You've been praying. And I want us to really spend some focused time in prayer on this fast I believe the Lord is about to launch us into different cities. I'm feeling it so strongly. And we are going to find a way, find his way, follow his leading, and God's going to open the door. But we need to bombard the gates of hell with some prayer and fasting about that very subject. Would anybody pray with me about that throughout this fast? Thank you, Jesus. I have a word from the Lord I want to share with you this morning. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 6. Wherever this scripture says you or ye or your, I want you to put your name. We're going to read this together, okay? Put your name, say your name wherever you see ye, you, or your. Everybody got it? Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, read it with me, I am the Lord, and I will bring out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid, say your name real loud for me. I need to know you're with me right now. And I will rid out of their bondage. And I will redeem with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And I will take to me for a people. And I will be to a God and shall know that I am the Lord God which bringeth out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will bring in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob and I will give it for an heritage I am the Lord. <laughs> One more passage of scripture, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 17. Like as a woman with child that draweth near to the time of her delivery. Everybody say delivery. Is in pain and crieth out in her pangs or her travails her labor, her contraction, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. I want to talk to you this morning about this topic, the discomfort of deliverance the discomfort of deliverance before you're seated would you lift your hands and lift your voices to the Lord and let's ask God to have his way this morning father I love you today thank you for these wonderful people that have carved out their schedule to put Jesus first by coming to the house of God I pray in the name of Jesus that every eye would see and every ear would hear what thus saith the Lord. Let the Spirit of God have total dominion in this room this morning, in every life, in every family. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. Turn to two or three people. Give them a list of compliments. How much you love them. How good they look. How fresh they smell. 
You may be seated. Something in hospitals called the delivery room. And the delivery room is where deliverance happens in the natural. Delivery, the word delivery means the act of deliverance happening right now. And for the most part, and from the experiences I have had watching my wife deliver children, it's not the most comfortable thing to do. Typically, there's a lot of pain involved. Um, they do everything they can to prepare the mama and the daddy, mostly the mama, for the pain that she will endure. But I don't, from the discussions I've had, I don't think anything can quite prepare you for what's going to happen. You're just going to have to get through it. There's pain. There are severe limitations. The tension builds for nine months. And the closer you get to deliverance, the worse the circumstances get. But if you just hold on and stay focused on what's coming, deliverance will happen. Deliverance is not pretty. It's by far one of the hardest things you'll ever experience in this life. It's bloody. It's brutal. But if you make up your mind, I'm coming out, it's worth it. When you look at Israel's exodus from Egypt, it's a story of deliverance that's unparalleled. In history, three million people, conservatively, three million people left the country that they had been in for 400 years to go start a new country, a new nation, follow God. And their captor, Pharaoh, their taskmaster, their slave owner, if you will, did not like the idea of setting those people free. And at first, Pharaoh, his reaction was not to negotiate when Moses walked into the court of Pharaoh and he echoed the words of God that said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And once the word of deliverance was spoken by the prophet of God, once the process of deliverance began from that word, life did not get easier for the Israelites. It got harder. Their enemy saw a group of people that made up their minds, we are about to be free. And instead of letting them go, he made their life harder. They were making brick from straw and clay, and the straw was kind of like the wire we put in cement nowadays to kind of keep it together and make it stronger. And they were provided the straw, and they had to, to put the straw in the brick and the mud and, and burn the bricks. And, and when Pharaoh saw people that were trying to be free, he spoke a decree that said they're going to get their own straw from now on. I'm going to make their life harder. And so the reason why I'm telling you that is so you understand when you begin to make steps towards deliverance, it does not mean that life is going to get easier for you. When the devil sees you start to make a move towards that door of deliverance, he's going to do everything he can to make your circumstances as adverse to your life as he possibly can. He's going to do everything he possibly can in your life uh, to make you struggle as much as possible because he knows the power of the word of deliverance that has been spoken over your life. Uh, and he knows he only has but a short time uh, to do whatever he can to keep you out of that door of deliverance. Uh, 
I want to encourage somebody today because somebody's been saying in your mind and also to the Lord, my life's gotten a whole lot worse since I started walking with the Lord. My life's gotten a whole lot harder since I started walking with the Lord. Let me tell you something. It's just a matter of time. If you keep your focus on the Lord, if you keep putting one step in front of the other, everything the devil is trying to do to stop that process of deliverance, it's going to fail. It's going to fall short. God's hand is not short that he cannot save. God's ear is not deaf to your cry. If you stay connected to the Lord, God's going to bring you out. After Pharaoh realized that he had no power to keep them, the negotiations began. Pharaoh offered them a series of compromises where they could scratch their church itch but still be slaves. Be spiritual but still slaves. Exodus 8 and 25, and Pharaoh called for Moses. This is after the Lord had beat Pharaoh up pretty good. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. Everybody say, in the land. He's talking about just have church but do it in Egypt. No need to separate yourselves. Just live like you've been living. It's okay. You can have both. You, you, you can have your church and have the world too. You can have church and still have your old lifestyle. You can have church and still live in sin. You can have church and have the same old friends. You can worship God without separation. You won't have to pack. You won't have to deal with the rejection of culture. You won't have to walk into uncharted territory just... Stay in what's familiar. Why would their captor say this to them? Because he wanted to keep them in bondage. But God says, 2 Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. What they had to understand is you cannot have God in Egypt at the same time. You cannot serve God and the world at the same time. You cannot say, I'm going to church, but never leave the world at the same time. You cannot serve serve two masters no matter what the enemy's trying to tell you to keep you in bondage you've got to get out of Egypt you've got to leave the world totally behind and be totally delivered and say that's my old life that's my old culture that's my old habits I'm going where the Lord wants me to go <laughs> Woo! Moses said no we got to go. Exodus 8 and 28, second compromise Pharaoh offered them. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. What does that mean? All right, if you're going to go, just stay close enough to Egypt that Egypt stays on your mind. Just stay close enough to Egypt that it's real easy to go right back to your old life. Just stay close enough to Egypt that when you start really dealing with the discomfort of your deliverance, you have an option to exit the process. Why would their captor say this? Because he wanted to keep them in bondage. Because in your deliverance process, hear me, saints of God, in your deliverance process, you will most certainly be tempted to push the exit button on that process. Uh, things are going to get so uncomfortable for you. And if they were close to Egypt, uh, they would have gone right back to their old life uh, when they were in the thick of their discomfort of deliverance. Numbers 11.5, uh, they said, we remember the fish uh, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons. and the, They couldn't remember the last they couldn't remember the chains they couldn't remember the depression 
the suicide, the brokenness. All they can remember was what was good in the world. The discomfort of your deliverance will get so thick that you have this flowery view of your past in the world. Maybe it wasn't so bad. We can remember the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna, which is, you know, just heaven-sent bread before our eyes. You want to know what kept them from going back? They did the opposite of what Pharaoh said. They did that old saying, I've come too far to turn back now. There's too many mountains we've climbed. There's too many deserts we've crossed. There's too many days. I've been too committed. I've been, I've gave too much. I've sacrificed too much. I've dealt with some blistering days in the desert. There's no way I'm going back to Egypt. We've come too far to turn back now. Jesus gave us the example in Luke 9 and 61. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. I, I want to keep the connection to my old life alive. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I want to tell you something. That deliverance process is going to be like plowing through a field right in the heat of the day, but don't look back. Don't look back back. Don't let your eyes turn back uh, from where God brought you from. I promise it was a disaster. That's why you're here. I promise it led you nowhere. That's why you're here. I promise the world didn't do anything for you. That's why you're here. And I want to tell you what's coming is better than what you've had. What's in front of you is better than where you've been. You just got to keep walking uh, through the discomfort. You got to keep on fighting. I know times are hard for you right now, but if you keep Keep on walking. You're going to see the fruit of God's promises in your life. Somebody ought to clap your hands and lift your voice and say, thank you, Lord, for deliverance. That compromise didn't work. Pharaoh offered them another one. Exodus 10 and 8. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto them, go serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds we will go. For we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And Pharaoh said unto them, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones. Look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now ye that are men and serve the Lord. What did their captor tell them? If you go worship like God wants you to, if you go to the church, God wants you to, there's going to be division in your family. Y'all are really quiet right now. I'm getting a little nervous. You're going to cause division in your family. Yeah, you can go worship God like he wants you to. But you're going to a place that's too hard for your family. Their captor said, you're serving your God is going to tear your family apart. Why would their captor say this? Because he wanted to keep him in bondage. What did God say? For the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord, our God shall call. Hey, just keep moving forward. The promise is big enough for your husband. The promise is big enough for your wife. The promise is big enough for your children. Of course, the devil is going to threaten you with a destroyed family. I'm going to tell you something. And sometimes people do have to leave their family behind. Jesus said it himself. But I want to promise you, mostly it's a lie from hell that's trying to keep you from moving forward. Forward in God's deliverance process. 
Exodus 10 and 24, another compromise. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. Why would he say keep your flocks and your herds here? The flocks and the herds were used for sacrifice. Why did their captor say this? To keep them in bondage. Because you can't follow God without a sacrifice. Jesus said unto his disciples, Matthew 16, 24, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The only way to follow Jesus is with a sacrifice on your back. The only way to follow him is by presenting a sacrifice unto him. Present your bodies a living sacrifice sacrifice every day you live you're going to sacrifice unto the lord and let me tell you what else the bible says about this hebrews 13 and 15 by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to god continually your captor said you can go to church just don't sacrifice let other people sacrifice for you let other people fast for you you just enjoy the clean atmosphere of everybody else's sacrifice. I'm pastoring, Lord. Help me right now. And then he said, let us offer the sacrifices of praise. Hey, go to church. Just keep your mouth shut. You can go to church. Just keep quiet. Just be a head nodder. Don't ever open your mouth and scream. Don't ever shout hallelujah. Hey, do you want to stay bound in prison? Do you want to stay a slave? Just keep your praise in prison. Just keep your praise in Egypt. Hey, they freak out over Egyptian ball games. They freak out over Egyptian celebrities. But your captor is saying, don't freak out over Jesus. Your captor knows the longer you stay in silence, the longer you stay a slave, the longer you refuse to praise, the longer you stay in prison. But the Bible says, Psalms 95 and 2, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise. Woohoo! Make a joyful noise. Who's silent? Slaves. What does the Bible say? Psalms 47 and 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Why? We've been delivered. We've been delivered. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be an uncomfortable church for people who don't like praise. And I just want to tell the devils of Palm Coast and this region right now, we are never going to yield to your pressure to have quiet church. I want to tell every captor. I want to tell every slave master in the spirit realm right now, we are never going to sit silently and have quiet church. We are going to be dancers, shouters, one God apostolic, tongue talking, screamers, because that's what the delivered do. You ought to fill your lungs with air right now and let us shout. Come on, let us shout. Come out of your mouth. Hallelujah.
Shaka Rahasa. Come on, let's take about 20 seconds and just let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the delivered declare it. Folks, this city does not need another Catholic church. This city does not need another Methodist church. I love them all. I have friends in every denomination. But what this city needs, what this whole East Coast needs, what St. Augustine needs, what every city around us needs is a screaming, delivered, fanatical, unintimidated, uninhibited people that are set free by the blood of the Lamb. You can be seated if you want to or stand. I don't care. When the moment of deliverance finally came, watch what Pharaoh said. Exodus 12, 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among the people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. And also take your flocks and herds as you have said. Everything you said, just go ahead. I've taken enough beatings. Do you know, as bad as you may feel in the discomfort of your deliverance, the devil feels worse. He puts this idea in our heads that he's somehow immune from anything. He's just, he's just there and he's talking and he's, you know, he's got his pitchfork and sitting on the throne of fire with his forked tail or whatever. And he's, he's there and he's breathing fire and he's getting his brains beat out. If you're going through it, hear me, CLC. If you're going through a mess right now and you feel the discomfort of that deliverance, I I promise you Pharaoh's feeling a whole lot worse. I know you had to go through a few of the plagues. I know you had to deal with some of the distress, but your enemy feels worse. The devil feels worse. He's getting his brains beat out. And if you stay with God, you're going to outlast him. You're going to outlast him. You're going to make it. The Lord gave me that revelation. I don't know when, probably a year or two ago. That when you're dealing with it, he's dealing with it more. It's literally a wrestling match. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. In spiritual wickedness in high places, we were wrestling these spirits. You're in a wrestling match for your family, for your soul. And there's two parties that are getting tired you and the devil. The difference between you and the devil is that he can't rest. This is the rest. Which causes the weary to rest. (laughs) Doesn't mean the storm's over. Doesn't mean the wrestling match is over. (laughs) With a stammering lips and another tongue. Let me tell you something. Every service you come to, every prayer meeting you come to, you should pray until you're talking in tongues. What is that? You're in a wrestling match. And God's going to breathe a rest into your spirit. You're going to get fresh energy to go kick him in the teeth one more time. I'm here to tell you you're going to win. I'm here to tell you you're going to win. I'm here to tell you you're going to win. If you don't give up, you're going to win. You're going to be delivered. Watch what he says. Exodus 12, 32. 
Also take your flocks and herds, as ye have said, and be gone. And bless me also. What used to fight them is now looking for a blessing from them. The crowd that used to hold them captive is now looking to them for direction. There's a bunch of people here who used to hang out with a particular crowd, used to be bound by all the junk that that particular crowd was in. Some of you, it's their actual family. Some of you have been tormented by those crowds. Some of you have been tormented by your family. And now... For some of you, the switch has already happened. Your ex-tormentors are looking to you for direction. Your ex-drinking buddies are looking to you for a word. The family members that mocked you and ridiculed you and put every obstacle they could in front of you, now that God has been teaching them, they are looking at you and they're seeing someone that just can't be kept down. They're looking at someone that just keeps on moving forward, that just keeps taking one step in the direction of Jesus after another. And all of a sudden, they're in a place now where God's talking to them and they're saying, how do I do it? What do you do? it got to be real. It's got to be real. Let me tell you something. God can change the heart of your adversaries. God can change the heart of your enemies. Watch what happens to the hearts of Israel's enemies. Exodus 11 and 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians that used to enslave them. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. The guy that's bringing all the plagues. They're like, this guy's awesome. In the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people, you don't have to fight them. You don't have to spend energy fighting them. Hear me. You do not have to fight them. I know they're trying to fight you. You do not have to fight them. Let God fight them. The moment you pick up the sword to fight them, God will stop fighting them. You've got to put them in God's hands. And when God is done teaching them, some of them are going to have a complete change of heart towards you. They're going to have a completely different view of you. That's what God does. That's what our king does. I want to tell you right now, deliverance is not comfortable. Deliverance is not pretty. Deliverance is not for the faint of heart. But deliverance is worth it. God wants to deliver you from everything that holds you captive. God wants to loose you from every chain that binds you. But you have to be willing to go through the process. Too many people have felt the discomfort of deliverance. and They stop the process in the middle. I have, this is a word from God. what Isaiah said about Israel, Isaiah 26, 17, like as a woman with child that draweth near to the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pain. She's uncomfortable. There's a promised deliverance coming. She's uncomfortable. She's in pain. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. But watch what he said. We have, as it were, brought forth The expected deliverance never happened because Israel ejected from the process. They stopped short of total. There are degrees of deliverance. Some of you have been delivered just enough to come to church. Some of you have been delivered... Just enough to pray every once in a while and come to church. Some of you have been delivered totally. You're not even the same person you used to be. Shackles that hang on you are shattered on the ground. There are degrees of deliverance. But Israel stopped short 
of the deliverance and all they brought forth was wind, just a breeze that's here for one moment and gone the next. You went through all that for nothing. If you hit the eject button, you're going to go through every devil you fought, every trial you went through, you're going to have gone through it for nothing. Who told you this was going to be comfortable? Who told you that it was? Guess what the devil tells people? If you're really serving God, it's just going to get easy for you. Oh, if you have a real miracle from God, all your pain leaves and all your discomfort leaves and everything just gets real nice and pretty. No, things are going to get bloody. Things are going to get nasty. Things are going to get brutal. God never said it would be comfortable. God never said it would be easy. But God did promise it would be worth it. I live next to a, a Cambodian couple when we lived in Bellevue before we moved here we lived next to a Cambodian a lady actually she married an American man and we were talking about her life and she was telling me how she escaped from communist Cambodia because in communist Cambodia you say the wrong thing you're dead you talk to the wrong people you're dead you listen to the wrong music you're dead they'll kill you at the drop of a hat and she snuck out by herself. Her mother was too old and too feeble to go with her, but her mother said, go, daughter. Get out of this country. And this young lady escaped her town, and she went into the Yellow River that separated her country from a free country, and the soldiers saw her in the river, the soldiers that were waiting at the border of deliverance. There's always soldiers right at the border of deliverance. Try to shoot you one more time. And if you do escape, you're wounded. She told me the soldier started shooting at her. But there was a log she was holding on to because she couldn't swim. She's in a river. Escaping for her life. And she can't swim. And when the soldiers begin to shoot at her. She went under the water and held onto that log and she said she felt she was going to drown and she would lift up her face and get a breath of air as the bullets pierced the water around her and she would hold onto the log as long as she could until she made it to the other country. Who said deliverance was going to be comfortable? There's a lady, a North Korean young lady who escaped out of North Korea. She saw... The reality of communism. Our, our culture is so dumbed down. They need to read a few history books about communism. Communism is brutal. It's, it's the rule of the king is what it is. It's the rule of the unrighteous king. That's what communism is. And it says it's the rule of all the people, right, everybody? She was there, and she saw people starving to death in the streets. She saw people beat to death in front of her eyes. Her parents were beat to death. Her father died in her home. Her siblings died in the home. The concentration camps, when you go to the concentration camps, you die. They starve you to death. They would eat cardboard. They would boil cardboard. They would eat grass right before they would die. They would eat the dirt in the streets, whatever they could put in their stomach to fill their belly. That's what slavery looks like. And she said that she escaped, tried to escape, and as soon as she crossed the border, she was captured by a group of slave sellers. They caught her, and she became a slave for another few years, and then she escaped and got caught by another slaveholder. And they would beat her and beat her and abuse her body and do all kinds of unspeakable things to her. And she escaped from there. And then she got caught by another slaveholder. And she did whatever she could to survive. She was in slavery from there. Then finally she just decided, I'm going to die or get out of here. And she left that area and went into another country and finally was free. I want to tell you something. She talks all over the planet right now. She speaks in Western countries mainly. And she says, you do not know what slavery is like. 
you think America is oppressed, all this stuff about America being oppressed, you don't, let me tell you what oppression looks like. It looks like North Korea. They're so oppressed, they don't even know they're oppressed. There was another man trying to escape North Korea. He was a soldier. He was actually a border guard. And he kept looking at the other side. It looks so good. Because when you're in slavery and you're looking at people on the other side, ah, you're living as a slave in view of freedom. You see somebody up here dancing and they just got a beam of light in their face. And you're in slavery looking at what freedom looks like. And the devil can tell you they're faking. It's a fantasy. But the more you watch them, the more you know it's real. They've been totally set free. And you haven't. And this soldier's there every day. He's watching the South Koreans. And they're eating, you know, whatever they want to eat. And they look plump. And they're laughing and they're talking and he's over there with his North Korean prison guards. The North Koreans have to report at least on one person a year. They have to turn at least one person in for treason. And if you don't have anybody that you know has done it, you make it up and the guards will come and kill them. Even the guards know that at some point they're going to rat on each other. This North Korean soldier finally got sick of living in view of freedom. And he started running. At first he got close to the barrier. To me this is people that come to church. They come to church and they feel it, but you can tell they're still a wave of oppression that binds their mind. There's still a wave uh, of depression and fear and lies from hell that bombard their thinking, but they can't help themselves. They, they come and they get in view of the freedom, and then, then all of a sudden he got a little bit closer and a little bit closer, and he finally made up his mind to start running, and it's on video. You can look it up. It's on video. This North Korean soldier started running. He ran out of the gate between the demilitarized zone and the North Korean soldiers. Uh, they were slaves, and they were doing what they were told to do and if they don't do it they're going to get shot too they started shooting at this man and this man got bullet holes in his back and in his side and he couldn't run anymore so he started crawling because he every 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 foot was a step closer to freedom and a step further away from bondage he's bleeding he's wounded he's broken but he wouldn't stop crawling and then all of a sudden some South Korean soldiers came and they saw him in a bush and he's dying and so they grabbed him under the fire of the slaves that are trying to keep him in slavery and they put him in an ambulance and he made it out and you know what he says right now every bullet hole was worth it every bullet hole was worth it every pain every surgery it was worth it freedom is worth it Can anybody testify right now that freedom is worth it? Shekele Maraha Sando Robo Hoshakatala Bahaya. Some of you need to lift your voice right now. I know you're getting shot at. Some of you are right at the border of deliverance and you're getting shot at. You're getting wounded and you see blood pouring out of your body and you thought coming to church would be different. You're wondering, is God even in this process? I I promise you, those of you that are sustaining wounds right now, it's going to be worth it. Those of you that are going through the intense discomfort of of deliverance, it is worth it. It's going to be worth it. When you get to the other side and you see the river and you see the land flowing with milk and honey it's going to be worth every trial it's 
going to be worth every battle. Some of you ought to get out of your seat right now and come and recommit to the process. And everybody's going through this process on some level. You ought to get out from behind that pew and come up here and lift your voice and say, God, I will not eject. I will not leave the process. I know I'm uncomfortable, but I'm going to depend on you. I'm depending on your voice. I'm depending on your spirit. I'm depending on your anointing. You've got to give me bread from heaven. I'm in a wrestling match for my life. You've got to give me that rest. Come on, pray loudly right now. Pray loudly. Intercessors, pray loudly. Prayer warriors, pray loudly. Ah! Come on, pray like your life depends on it right now. Pray like your life depends on it right now. Pray like somebody else's life depends on it right now. You got to make up in your mind, I'm coming, Jesus. It's uncomfortable to get out of a pew. I know it is. Hey, but you've got to embrace it. This is how God does it. There's no other way. God's breaking you free. Come on, some of you need to let your anger out right now. Some of you need to let your discomfort out of your mouth right now. Some of you need to let your pain out of your mouth right now. Come on, God knows what you're going through. God sees what you're going through. God's not going to leave you. God's not going to forsake you. God's not going to lie to you. He's going to bring you out. There is a victory. There is a promise. There is a deliverance. Raya Sataye, ya, 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 ha, na, 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 Satataya, ha, ta, 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 rekaya, ya, la, ramashaya, handa, la, ba, kaye, kia, ya, la, ba, ba, re, ba, da, la, ba, haya. I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. I'm going to embrace the discomfort. I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. There is a promised land. There is a new dimension. There is a new door to step through where everything changes. Right now you're wrestling. Right now you're fighting. Not because God has forgotten you, but because God has remembered you. There's a travail in this house right now. There's a scream of determination in this house right now. There is a shout of determination in this house. You think I'm going to quit, devil? You got another thing coming. I've just begun to fight. God's going to strengthen me. I'm coming out. That's it. Don't stop praying. Something's happening right now. Intercessors, get your hands on somebody. Prayer warriors, uh, get your hands on somebody. Ministers, get your hands on somebody. There's so many people in this altar that need a word right now.
When God said, I heard the cry of Israel, I've heard their cry. That's when the discomfort began. When God said, I heard your cry of help, that's when the discomfort began. When God said, I heard you screaming for help, that's when the distress began. Not because God's forgotten you, but because God heard you. There's a baby about to be born. There's a deliverance about to be born. There's a new land about to be walked in. I want to speak to the weary soul this morning. I want to speak to that soul that's been thinking about giving up this morning. I want to speak to that soul that's been entertaining the thought of just pushing the eject button. Don't you know you're almost there? Don't you know you're right at the wall? You're right at the boundary. You're right at the outer skirts of that boundary. And yes, of course, there are soldiers there that are shooting at you to keep you in bondage. Don't give up, sir. Don't throw in the towel, sir. Ma'am, don't stop walking. You are going to get shot, but it's going to be worth it. You may get wounded, but it's going to be worth it. Don't give up. Some of you are getting rest in your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul right now. You're receiving rest from the Lord right now in the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you don't know what else to say, just talk in tongues. Let that high praise come out of your mouth. Let that spirit voice come out of your mouth. Ah, this is the rest which causes the weary to rest. With a stammering lip and another tongue, will he speak to this people? Every time you talk in tongues, you give your spirit rest uh, for another round of kicking the devil in the face. Uh, some of you kick the devil in the face just coming here today. Some of you kick the devil in the face uh, just coming here today. Some of you, it was on a razor thin edge. Uh, whether you were even going to come or not, uh, you just being here. Kick the devil in the face. Uh, let the Lord refresh you. Let the Lord renew you.
I feel the spirit of a made up mind in this room right now. I feel the spirit of a made up mind in this room. I feel the spirit of a made up mind in this room right now. I am not going to quit. I'm going to get it or die trying. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, devil, you're going to wish you never heard my name. Pharaoh, you're going to wish in just a little while that you never even heard the name Israel because the waters are coming like a sea and they're going to swallow you up. And my enemy, my adversary, my foe is going to be destroyed forever and I'm going to be dancing on the other side. I feel the spirit of a made up mind. Yare bankai. Come on, God's healing some of the wounds that you've sustained. God's healing some of the wounds that you've sustained in that journey right now. He's putting oil on those wounds right now. He's putting that Holy Ghost salve on those wounds right now. Some of you got burned up when you crossed that barbed wire fence. Uh, some of you got shot when you came over the border. Uh, God's healing some of those wounds right now. The great physicians in the room. I want you to hear me for a moment. God, God has spoken to me a direct word from the Lord. I want you to hear me if I can have everybody's attention. I, and, and the Lord has shown me exactly who is having this thought. And I want to speak to you the mind of God right now. You keep saying, surely there must be more keep saying, surely there's got to be more than this. That is a gift from God to have that thought. But the more that is needed is the more of you. For you to experience the more that you keep on saying, I know there's got to be more you got to put more of yourself on the altar. And if you put yourself on the altar, you're going to touch that more that your soul so desperately craves. Now lift your hands right now and just pray to receive it. Pray that everyone would receive it. Shara haya haya. Come on, lift your voice. One more minute. Just lift your voice. Let's receive it. Ilo moho sayela rama kaya la rama shakata la bayada la bakaya da la basata raba kava jagaba da yada la baba patata. Ooh, ito no re kaya re ma yishele re mandulo bokote he brahashele mataya. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Ishema na 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 heal the wounds, Jesus, heal the wounds, Jesus. Heal the wounds, Jesus, heal the cuts and the scrapes and the wounds, God. 
In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. I want you to, you can stay and pray as long as you want. I want you to turn to at least five people and look them right in the eye and say, deliverance is worth it. Deliverance is worth it. Come on, babe, if you have announcements. Deliverance is worth it. It is worth it. It's worth it. Praise God. Let's just tell the Lord thank you as we go back to our seats for the word of the Lord that he spoke directly to us. Thank you, Jesus. And if you have ever had a child or if you've been married to someone who has, you know deliverance a lot of times, very rarely does it happen super fast. There's a few times that happens the more you have, <laughs> but a lot of times it takes a little while. So when you go home, you got to let the Lord keep working on you. You got to get in that prayer closet. You got to come back Sunday night. We have church at six o'clock tonight. Let that process keep happening until you're completely delivered, until every part of you is free. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have, um, speaking of deliverance, <laughs> Sister Jasmine is due <laughs> in just a couple weeks. Uh, with physical deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sure she's ready. Um, can you wave your hand just so we all know? Sister Jasmine Tucker, she is having a beautiful baby girl um, that's going to be coming when she wants, sometime end of January, early February. And tonight, right after the 6 o'clock service, we are going to have a baby shower for her. Um, I've asked her the things that she needs. She said diapers and wipes. And she could use some bibs for the baby. But other than that, mostly diapers, wipes, and, um, of course, gift cards and cash are always wonderful. She can go order on Amazon or go to Walmart, buy whatever she needs. So tonight, please come ready to bless her and her family before this baby gets here. Um, we're so thankful that God is bringing a new life into CLC. Beautiful baby. Amen. <clears throat> so we will see you all tonight at... 6 o'clock service, 5.30 prayer, and we hope you all make it back. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You are dismissed.